This here measure theory, class 7, is on product spaces and coordinate spaces. So far, the outcome sets in our measure spaces or probability spaces have been relatively simple. For example, outcome sets have consisted of patients, hospitals, or doctors. But what if you need to work with an outcome space that is more complex? Well, we can accommodate that. You might choose an outcome set that consists of hospitals and patients together, or patients and doctors together, or doctors and hospitals together. You could also have an outcome set consisting of individuals assigned to a specific treatment. Also, a complex outcome set could um, have a complex element, such as collecting five people, which is a data generating process. So let's look at individuals assigned to a particular treatment. If you go out and randomly select a person from outcome set S and then randomly assign them to a treatment A, B, or C from outcome set T, your outcome to this process will be an individual and a treatment. It is a pair of items. This pair of items is an element in the out complex outcome set. And this element is a complex outcome. So how will you model this complex outcome? You can create a space called the product space. It is the cross product of the two outcome sets. So each element in the product space is a set that has two items. Let's use a table to represent this. The rows represent the patient outcome set. The columns represent the treatment outcome set. And the cells in this table represent all the possible outcomes, each of the patients matched with each of the treatments. This encompasses each possible pair of outcomes. So the product set is the combination of all the elements of each outcome set with each other. So your data generating process happens to produce a more complex outcome than a single item. Then that is what you have to model if you are modeling the data generating process. So far we have started with two outcome sets and created the cross product of those two outcome sets. But more generally, we can start with two measurable spaces. We can also create the cross product of two sigma algebras the same way as with the outcome sets. Just create a set that is all the possible pairs of sets from the two sigma algebras. But to go from two measurable spaces to one complex measurable space, you have to ensure that the sigma algebra in the complex measurable space is a sigma algebra on the outcome set of that measurable space. In other words, sure, you create a complex sigma algebra from the two sigma algebras, but would you get that same sigma algebra if you took the complex outcome set and created the sigma algebra. You should if you take all the events in Q and cross them with all the events in F. And then use the rules of constructing a sigma algebra by adding the unions and complements. This resulting set is the sigma algebra on the complex outcome set. It is the sigma algebra of the complex measurable space. Add a probability measure to the complex measurable space. And now you have a probability space. In our example of patients and treatment types, you can ask about the probability of getting the combination of women and surgery or men and pills. You can also ask about getting a particular patient, patient 1, and a particular treatment, surgery, which is 1 ninth. But that is really determined by the data generating process. If you have an equal probability sample, 
that was the probability of getting a patient with equal probability sampling and the probability of getting a treatment with random assignment and you multiply them together that is called the product measure and it is okay to develop the probability measure of the complex probability space using the product measure but this only works if the two event spaces are independent we introduced independence in the previous video, so if you want to go back one video and refresh your memory, you can. So what this means is, if the two data generating processes are unchanged by combining them, then they are independent. However, if there needs to be a new data generating process when the two outcomes are combined, then they would not be independent. They would be dependent. But the probability measure of the complex probability space does not have to be the product measure. It could actually contain more information than the probability measures of the original two probability spaces. So you could just start with two measurable spaces and add a probability measure to the complex measurable space. That probability measure is then associated with the complex event set. The bottom of this slide is the complex probability space with all the parts written out. The outcome set written as the cross product, the event set written as the sigma algebra of the cross product and the probability measure, which may or may not be a product measure. This leads to marginal probabilities. You might remember this notation. We used it uh, in a previous slide to represent a conditional probability, but now we're going to use the same notation to represent a marginal probability. So here is the complex probability space with the full notation. So we remember which sigma algebras belong to which outcome sets. Let's describe a marginal probability starting with this notation. We have the probability of an event Q. This event comes from the event set Q. That is the sigma algebra on the outcome set S. Now, this is a marginal probability. And it is the marginal probability of an event Q with respect to the set S. Using the probability measure on the event set Q circle cross F, it is equal to the probability of the event Q crossed with the outcome set T. In other words, the cross product of the event Q and the entire outcome set T. That is the marginal probability. This marginal probability is the probability of an outcome in S that is also a set in the sigma algebra Q and any element of the outcome set T. And this marginal probability is the probability of an outcome in T that is also a set in the sigma algebra F and any element of the outcome set S. What's inside the parentheses? The event Q comes from the sigma algebra on S. S is the outcome set with patients. So Q could be any event. It could be a patient or a subset of patients. This event is crossed with the entire outcome set T, which is all of the treatments. But this probability does not come from the measure space with S as the outcome set or the measure space with T as the outcome set. This probability is the measure on the complex measurable space. Using our example, it could be the probability of patient number three and pills, patient number three and injection, patient number three and surgery. 
So really, it is the complex cross product of patients and treatments. So the marginal probability is simply asking, what is the probability of getting patient number three? So also going the other way, we have the marginal probability of, for example, assigning surgery to patient number one or patient number two or patient number three. It is like you're taking the complex probability space and projecting this probability measure onto the two individual measurable spaces. Remember that this is a probability space. So this whole table, which is the outcome set of the complex measurable space, must add up to what? It must sum to 1. And if you sum the probabilities in each of these rows, you will get the marginal probabilities. And the sum of these marginal probabilities also equals 1. Similarly, if you sum the probabilities in each of the columns, you will get marginal probabilities of the treatment events and they will sum to 1. These are probability distributions. Here we have collapsed across all the columns or across all the rows to create a new distribution. These are coordinate spaces written like this. These are your coordinate spaces with the marginal probability measures. They are two coordinates of the more complex space. These two coordinate spaces are independent if the probability of an event in the complex probability space equals the marginal probability of one part of the event multiplied by the marginal probability of another part of the event. Using this example, if the probability of the event patient number two assigned the treatment pill equals the marginal probability of getting patient number two multiplied by the marginal probability of assigning the pill treatment, then the coordinate spaces are independent. The probability measure for an event in the complex measurable space is simply the combination of the two probability measures from the simple measurable spaces. By saying that they are independent, what you are saying is that the probability of event Q does not depend at all on the event F which is what we have in the case of an equal probability sampling for a patient followed by randomly assigning the patient to a treatment. In this case, the treatment assignment does not depend on who the patient is that got selected. The probability of the combination of patient number two and pill treatment is the same as the probability of getting patient number two multiplied by the probability of assigning the pill treatment. But it is not independent, or it is dependent, if, say, you randomly get a patient over the age of 80. And, say, people over the age of 80 are not eligible for surgery, so they can only get pills or injections. That would be an example of dependency in this scenario. So you can also represent independence with conditional probabilities like we did before. The probability of an event in one coordinate given an event in another coordinate should be equal to the marginal probability across events for independence. It could be the probability of the event pill treatment represented by this column 
given the event patient number three represented by this row. If it is all equal probability sampling with random treatment assignment, then one-third. If it is the case that greater than 80-year-olds cannot get surgery and the given event patient number three is 24 years old, then it's still one-third. But if the given event patient number three is 84 years old, then you have one half. Thank you very much. Um, please like, subscribe, and comment. In our next video, we'll talk about what is an observation, when are observations dependent, clustered and nested sampling. So stay tuned. Thanks again.